Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to run your Game Maker games that you've created inside of your virtualized copy of Game Maker Studio natively on your Mac. So basically at build time, we're going to be able to deploy our games from our virtualized copy of Game Maker and have them run on our Mac as native applications. Now, in the previous video, I showed you guys how to set up Parallels and install Windows on that box and also get Game Maker up and running on your Mac. So if you haven't seen that video, jump back into that video and run through those steps and you'll be able to get Game Maker Studio working on your Mac. Now, the reason that you might want to do this is, let's say, for instance, you're working on a Mac game inside of Game Maker and you've previously been using a Windows PC and then deploying remotely to your laptop to test. In this setup here, you can work and deploy from the same machine. Another instance that you might want to do this for is if you are just uh, trying to develop a game and you want to see what sort of native performance you're going to get, you would then also deploy like this. And that also means that if you're running um, Game Maker Studios IDE inside of a, um, a virtualized environment on a lesser powered machine, say a MacBook 13 inch model or something like that, then you're going to get back some of your performance by running the game uh, natively rather than virtualized through the uh, Parallels platform. So to show you guys what I mean, I'm going to open up my existing RPG tutorial project. You'll see the target is set to Windows and that Game Maker is running on my Mac underneath Windows 7 on a virtualized system. If I select the play option, what you'll see is that our game will our game will run. It will just run at a limited capacity. Now I have quite a powerful Mac, so it's probably not going to notice this, but if this was running on a, on a laptop, it might be running a little bit slower than it would be on a native machine. But this also just does show you that we're able to get um, a game running at near native speeds in a you know virtualized environment on our Mac. But ideally what we want to do is change our target type to Mac OS 10 and actually natively deploy that application. So the first thing you're going to need to do this is you're going to need to go into the App Store and download Xcode. I believe it's free still. Um, you used to have to pay for it, but I think it's free now. So you can just download and install Xcode. Once you've got that, actually open Xcode up and it's going to do some installation on your machine and install some files. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Once Xcode's been installed, you can then quit from that. The next thing we need to do is enable remote login on our Mac, and this is going to enable our virtual machine to actually remotely connect to our host machine. I say remotely even though they're local, but you have to think of the virtual machine as a separate computer and actually log into that machine. And to do that, all you need to do is open up System Preferences, go to the Sharing option, enable this remote login function, and then allow access for all users. Once you've done that, you can close off of that. The next thing that we need to do, by default, Parallels sets up our our um, connection settings so that they're shared between the host and the and the client machine. But what we want to do is we want to bridge the connection back to our router. This means that our router is going to be able to give our virtual machine a proper IP address and actually put that fake machine, that virtual computer, onto the same network that your Mac is on. Now to do this, change your network type from shared network to your bridged adapter. Whichever adapter that is for you, I'm not sure. It might be your inbuilt Mac Wi-Fi. It might be your inbuilt Mac Ethernet port. Just um, try them both out and see which one works for you. For me, I know it's this first Ethernet. Once that's done, your virtual machine is going to be assigned an IP address from your actual router. And we can verify that by running IP config inside of Windows. <coughs> excuse me, and you'll see that now we have an IP address that's on the same network as my Mac. If I open up System Preferences to find out what my Mac's IP address is, you'll see it's 192.168.1.13, and my virtual machine is 192.168.1.14. Now these first three numbers are telling me that that is on the same network. Now it's important to know what your Mac's IP address is, because your Windows machine, which is running virtualized inside of your Mac, is going to need to connect to this IP address. So I'm just going to close out of terminal now and I'm going to move this to my second screen so I can remember those numbers. Now remembering that we've enabled remote login, all we need to do is now go to Game Maker, File Preferences, scroll on over to the Mac OS X section 
and you'll be presented with the host name, username, and password. And also the Mac install directory. This is the directory where Mac is actually going to, in, sorry, not Mac, where GameMaker is actually going to install itself. So in order to test these settings first, we first need a host name. Now the host name is gonna be the IP address of your Mac. So that's gonna be for me, 192.168.1.13, as confirmed by the network dialog inside of our uh, system preferences. Now the Mac username is gonna be the username that you use to log into your Mac. In my case, that's rm2kdev, and the password in my case is uh, unfortunately not available to you. Um, from this point, we need to check our Mac's connection. If all has worked, what you should see is uh, hello world come back. So that's basically a ping. Um, by checking the connection, we've established a connection between Game Maker and our Mac. Now, if we select OK, at this point, we should be able to do a native deployment to Mac OS X. So if you do, if you if you have the Mac um, exports on your Game Maker or you own a version that has the Mac exports or you've purchased them separately, go ahead and change your target from Windows to Mac OS X and select Play. What you should note is the game will compile itself and it should transfer across the DMG file to our Mac via that remote connection and it will start the game up. And as you can see, we now have a game running natively on our Mac that was created on our Mac using a virtualized copy of Game Maker. Obviously, there's some settings that I haven't set up. I haven't actually ported this game to Mac yet, so you see the graphics aren't as sharp as they should be. But to demonstrate the um, rapid iterative design process that you'll be able to get using this system, I'm gonna close that, change my settings for Mac really quickly. Just go in here to my graphic settings, untick this interpolate between colors. That turns off anti-aliasing by default. Select OK, and I'm gonna build my game again for Mac. It does add two or three seconds to the build process, but when you're dealing with a large game that's already taking, you know, 30 seconds to a minute to compile, it's not such a, not such a problem. And you'll see my game is now running natively on my Mac. Don't have any uh, frame rate, uh, frame rate statistics yet because I'm actually not um, running this in debug mode, but let's go ahead and try and see if debug mode works. And now you'll see that the Game Maker remote debugger has opened up inside of Windows and the game is running on our Mac. And we're able to also, you know, perform all of the standard debug tasks such as pause, get a snapshot, snapshot of our variables and resume and add breakpoints in our code and work basically inside of Game Maker as if it was natively running on our Mac. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this video on YouTube, like, comment on it, um, share it on Twitter, share it with your dog, share it with your mom, your cat. I don't know if your mom makes games, but if she does, definitely share this video with her because I'm sure she'd appreciate it. So thank you guys for watching and uh, rate, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Bye.